Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Boruto Naruto Next Generations Chapter 65. When we last left our heroes, uh, Boruto was able to either, you know, through the effects of Amado's meds or just through some kind of training or something that happened off screen, is able to tap into a deeper uh, reserve of his karma powers than we've seen before without activating Momoshiki's persona which allows him to sort of kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Code for a while. Code's abilities still allow him to sort of avoid most damage, but he gets, he, he puts up a good fight. Uh, Naruto, meanwhile, is going to use Sage Mode to come over to join the fight with Chikamaru. Um, so we're going to get to see Naruto fight without Kurama for the first time. There's a weird bit where he tells Hinata to stay home that I talked about last time. Uh, but as the fight goes on, Kawaki eventually realizes that maybe their best chance to protect Naruto is to just bring Code down now. So he joins the fight, and as the fight is kind of going for a while, Boruto collapses in pain. For some reason, we don't really know why yet. Uh, that's where we left off. So with all that said, let's jump right on into Chapter 65, Karma Power. And our picture here is of Naruto in Sage Mode. He's a Okage cloak kind of like swishing around him. It's a real cool vibe he's got going on there. Uh, but we open right where we left off with Boruto on the ground in pain, clutching his chest, uh, shutting the eye that's been sort of the, the karma mark covers. And Code watches him as Kabuki thinks, Damn it, don't tell me. Is it a side effect of those meds? And he calls out, Boruto! And Boruto just grunts, Gah! Ah! And there's this keen sound effect that kind of emanates from Boruto and this mist appears shocking Boruto and Kawaki and Boruto looks up confused uh Code is also just sort of watching on and Boruto thinks huh what's happening and then we see a certain figure up in the treetops and that figure is almost certainly Momoshiki uh Boruto is shocked the figure disappears uh, and Momoshiki floats down next to him. Even if you halt karmic extraction with some trifling drug, it's no more than a stopgap measure. And Boruto looks back, and we see Momoshiki's face um, for the first time in this chapter. It's a little bit unclear, though. It seems like Kawaki and Code have noticed this, too. They've at least noticed the kind of steam everywhere, smoke or whatever it's supposed to be, that sort of has, has heralded Momoshiki's arrival. Uh, but Momoshiki turn, looks down at Boruto and says, Hello again, foolish lad. And Boruto gr growls up at him, Momoshiki. Ugh. And he looks down at his, his karma, um, karma spread palm and thinks, It's no good. I can't move. Uh, and Kawaki and Code are, are both kind of still there. They seem to be acknowledging Momoshiki. Uh, and the smoke passes through, I guess, one of Code's portals back to the base with Ada. And it just sort of floats around her, too. Uh, and Boruto thinks, and not because I used up all my strength or chakra. It feels like time itself was stopped. This happened before. Oh, no, I misinterpreted that. They're not reacting. They're frozen. Okay. Um... I don't know, I'm trying to see, looking at the Kawaki on page 3 and the Kawaki on page 7, they seem to have somewhat different reactions, but maybe it's just a, a question of angle. I don't know. But I, I am guessing that Boruto's initial confusion on page 3 is not the appearance of the smoke or Momoshiki, it's that Kawaki froze. Uh, and that freezing has led to Code and Diamond and Ada. Um, the fact that we have to see the smoke go in there to signify that time is paused. I'm curious if that affects Naruto and Chikamaru too, who don't have an easy portal into the battlefield. I don't know. Uh, but he fla anyway, this happened before. Uh, he flashes back to the aftermath of the fight with Momoshiki way back in chapter 9 or 10 uh, as Momoshiki sort of lounges on the little ledge or whatever uh, that day, right after we took Momoshiki down. That's likely when he implanted the karma in me. Well, I mean, it must have happened before he died, right? Or else the karma wouldn't have worked. Uh, but anyway, Momoshiki goes over and looks at, at Code. Wordless Kara dregs. He's the one who has the divine tree seedling. Ten tails, isn't he? Uh, and Boruto just looks at him. What a perfect chance to kill him. Move aside, boy. But then, 
we see that, um, oh, maybe time begins again. Because Kaoki is calling again, Boruto! And Boruto leaps up in front of Code. That might be Momoshiki taking control of Boruto to do this whole scene. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because with Boruto's left eye closed, that shows that the Boruto consciousness is no longer there. And Code recognizes that. Momoshiki. And Momoshiki just raises his palm, Rasengan. And he instantly creates this huge Rasengan. That might be... Is that bigger than the combo Naruto-Boruto Rasengan from the Momoshiki fight? I'm not sure, but it's, it's pretty huge. Uh, and as the dust clears, Momoshiki looks... And Kawaki has gotten in the way thanks to one of his, his claw marks. Ridiculous destructive power. So totally different from Boruto's karma strength. So this is true Otsutsuki power. No wonder Boro had no chance. And Momo looks back at him. It'll be the same for you. You'll learn soon enough. And then we come back to the Leaf Village uh, where Amado is learning about uh, what's happened over the past few chapters. Kawaki's already encountered code. How do you know? Uh, and Sai, who we learned last time, was guarding uh, Amado. They've confirmed an unknown chakra with Boruto. Signs indicate that they're fighting. Who else could it be? Uh, and Amado thinks he shouldn't have any sensing abilities. That was way too fast. How the heck did he find Kawaki? And Sumire presses, maybe there's an ally working with him. Like an outer? But Amado pushes back. I won't discount the possibility, but... There isn't an outer who's that skilled either, as far as I know. He's about to work out that it's Ada. Because he, he's the one who has, like, first-hand knowledge of Ada. Uh, but anyway, Sai goes on. In any event, we should take Code's appearance to be a good thing, considering the trouble we had trying to locate him. Lord Seven's already headed there. So long as we get rid of Code, the existence of any ally won't matter. Uh, and Amino just sort of, I think he's, like, lost in thought, realizing that Ada's at play here. And Sai presses, are you listening? Or are your ears plugged up with wax? And Sumire looks at him, and Amino like, takes a cigarette out and sort of mutters to himself. Uh, and thinks, come on, Kawaki. We've got him this far. Don't you muck it up now. And so it's sort of, it's sort of written out like a thought. But it might be whispering. And Sumire, who, who is, of course, very suspicious of Amino takes note of that. Uh, presumably, it has something to do with whatever plan Amino has for Kawaki. Though, again, still unclear what that's supposed to be. Anyway, we're back with the giant Rasengan, um, as I guess Momoshiki has created another one to attack Code. This time, Kawaki is blown back, and I think he just does it again, again and again and again, uh, as Code is, like, barely holding on. Uh, Ada tells him, Code, you might want to retreat. There's no way you'll hold up against an opponent that powerful. And Kawaki just watches the devastation as Momoshiki just devastates the landscape with giant Rasengan after giant Rasengan. And then he turns back to Kawaki. Uh, and then Code appears right behind Kawaki, grappling him to, like, kidnap him, I, I presume. Uh, and Bor Momoshiki goes for another giant Rasengan, starts to form it, uh, but then Ko tells him, Whoa there, don't you want the chakra fruit too, Momoshiki? Then you'll need him as your Otsutsuki sacrifice to feed to Ten Tails. You might want to stand down. And Momoshiki kind of acknowledges that. That like, yeah, he does sort of need Kabuki in the short term. I don't know why once Momoshiki takes over, he can't just make a new sacrifice. Uh, but that would presumably take a whole lot of time, as we saw with, with Ishiki's, you know, whole bunch of, of dead experiments. Uh, so that's probably, that's probably why. It's, 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 it's just a whole lot of work to kill a perfectly good vessel. Mm. Anyway, uh, Ko tells Momo, I'm taking him with me for a private matter. It was brief, but still an honor to meet you. Oh, it suits Momo Shiki. And they pop through the, the claw, um, and Boruto, or Momo Shiki sends out a little itty, he takes that giant Rasengan, and compresses it to an itty-bitty Rasengan, presumably upping the power by compressing it like that. Rasengan. Don means bullet. So it's basically like a Rasengan gun he's throwing at, at Code. It flies after them. 
Uh, and definitely pierces through code. It's not quite clear if he also... Yeah, it seemed like he, he specifically missed Kawaki. He got him, like, an, in the shoulder. Um, which would let Momoshiki, you know, keep his sacrifice. Kodo's sort of shocked at the precision there. What? And Kawaki sort of knows his, his newfound freedom. Ada remarks, code! And Momoshiki lunges for Code and kicks him hard in the face. Code is sent flying, grabs himself, uh, and... And Momo notes, what a dud karma. You can't even absorb jutsu with it, can you? And Ada notes something arriving. Maybe it's Naruto and Shikamaru who have showed up. Um, and she, she t- turns to Code, or calls to Code. Code, can you hear me? And Momo is now like, grab Kawaki, pulling him away. Kawaki reacts, damn it, let me go. Uh, Momo tells him, hey now, that's no way to talk to the one who rescued you. Be nice. Or I'll break all your limbs and shut you up. And Kawaki reacts, bastard! And gets his whole, you know, giant claw thing to go attack uh, Boruto. And Momo just kicks him down. Hits the dirt. uh, And Momo, like, steps on his arm. Rebellious imp. Fine. And he turns to press down on, um, on Kawaki's arm to break it. As you wish. But just then, a shadow hits Boruto, it's Shikamaru here to stop him. Mm. The Who Knows level really work, given the Jutsu absorption abilities of Karma, though maybe much like the Claws had too much of code in them to be absorbed, maybe the Shadow also has too much of um, of Shikamaru to be absorbed, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, Momo looks back at this new interruption. And while Shikamaru is holding him down, Naruto rushes in to rescue Kawaki. Uh, and Momo notes, Hokage. And Kaoki calls him Lord Seventh. And Shikamaru asks, Is Boruto running amok again? What a pain in the butt. And uh, Momo goes to absorb the shadow. It does seem to work. And it cuts off uh, cuts off Shikamaru's shadow. And Shikamaru notes, Damn it, he absorbed it. And Code calls, or Ada calls Code again. And now it's total mayhem. What are you going to do? I think you should call it a day. Uh, and and uh, Ko tells her his second, Nara Shikamaru, is here too. Interesting. He has a little smirk. Like, he's going to keep on fighting, even though he's kind of getting his ass handed to him. Um, and Naruto asks Kawaki, You okay, Kawaki? What's going on with Boruto? Has that bastard Momoshiki taken over his body again? And Kawaki tells him, Gah! And then, then just yells, I ain't okay at all! Why the heck did you come? Because again... Kawaki thought he was doing all of this for Naruto, as I've been saying, sort of ignoring Naruto's own desires in this situation. Um, but Shikamaru's kind of taken aback by that, and Naruto looks at him confused. Kawaki? And Kawaki tells him, run away! Hurry! Or else you really will get killed! And Naruto just looks at him and turns back, I appreciate your concern, but I'm the Hokage. I cannot and will not run from an enemy that threatens my village. And Kawaki calls, no, Lord Seventh! I mean, given the situation with Momoshiki and Naruto and Shikamaru, Code might actually be outmatched here. Even Ada is saying, you know, get the fuck out of here, man. Uh, anyway, Code picks himself up. Ugh. Oh, and he's grabbed Shikamaru. You know, hands over his neck and sort of like bound his, his arms behind him. Uh, shocking Kawaki, Naruto calls, Shikamaru! No sudden moves, Hokage. Now listen. Take even one step, and I'll slit his throat open and kill him. I mean, that's not really going to stop Momo, but okay. Uh, and Naruto just growls at him, bastard. And Shikamaru berates himself, damn it, shame on me. Listen to me, Naruto. Don't work yourself up, yourself up about it. Just take him down without regard for me. I knew what the risks were, and there's no other way. you got to do what's best. And Ko just stops him, shut up. You want me to just kill you? And Shikamaru, willing to die, it'll help take down Code. Sure, no problem. Come on, get to it. And Naruto watches this, getting kind of panicked. Kawaki also watches on. Um, and then Momoshiki comes in. Fascinating. I think I shall help you, Code. Kill the Hokage, that is. He's a nuisance to me as well. So we're seeing there are like three distinct camps here. And... You know, alliances are forged as 
at sort of at will. You know, you have Code and Ada, you have the Leaf, and you have Momo doing his own thing. And when it's just Team Code and Momo, Momo is more than will- willing to, to kill Code. But there's a bigger threat, I guess, in Momo's eyes, and that is the Hokage. He's going to take this opportunity to kill Naruto. And again, we can sort of, like, everyone's been saying that Code is a bigger threat than Naruto. And maybe Momo doesn't quite believe that, or he's unaware of that, or he's not really conscious enough to listen into these conversations in Boruto's body. I don't know. Either way, he sees this as a golden opportunity to just get rid of Naruto once and for all. Anyway, kill the Hokage, that is. He's a nuisance to me as well. And that shocks Kawaki, because again, Kawaki's whole thing is saving Naruto. And Naruto sort of acknowledges Momo's threat, and Ko tells him, hmm, be my guest. And Chikamaru yells, damn it! Do it, Naruto! Fight them! It's the only option! And Kawaki ready, grits himself and runs at Momo Shiki, ready to protect Naruto. Naruto yells, Kawaki, stop! And Kawaki readies his, his claw thing, uh, but is just kicked aside by Boruto. Hits the ground. Naruto calls, Kawaki! Uh, but Code continues, don't move, Hokage. You want him to die? Uh, and Naruto lets out a gah as he acknowledges Kawaki's uh, injured self. Mm. Kawaki goes to pick himself up, and Naruto thinks, damn it, what do I do? And Momoshiki taunts him, checkmate, Hokage. Resign yourself. No matter how strong one is, the end is often pitifully abrupt. And Naruto readies something, some t- either a defense or like whatever this is supposed to be. Um, and Momoshiki readies massive Rasengan. And he forms a gigantic Rasengan. Uh, and as the dust clears, uh, you see the dust, we see Code and Shikamaru who thinks, Naruto! And the Rasengan sort of fades away. As the dust clears, we see Momoshiki kind of shocked. Whoa! Oh, no. Kawaki, what did you do? What did you do, Kawaki? Because we see... We see another karma. Uh, and Momoshiki creates another Rasengan. And he's, rea- he's, he's shocked because he reacts. It's getting absorbed. Uh, and we flash back to what Amado said ages ago. Is it powerlessness that's irritating you? Or grief over losing the karma? We have this image of Ada and Code all sort of reacting to this. So take it for yourself, especially since Ishiki is gone for good. Brand new power in the form of a karma that's purely a weapon. And yeah, we see Kawaki with specifically an Ishiki, a Jigen and Ishiki style karma. We see the same curving horn that Ishiki had. Uh, I think this is, I'm assuming it's the same pattern that Jigen had on his arm. The more diagonal stripes as opposed to uh, to Boruto's one gash through his eye. He's gotten that karma back. Uh, there's only one more page left, so I'll, I'll read that before I share my thoughts about that. Uh, as Naruto reacts, Kawaki! And Momoshiki also watches on as Code thinks, No way. That's impossible. What the heck's going on? And we end just seeing Kawaki... With his new karma form. Okay. So I'm incredibly suspicious that, um, that Jige, that Ishiki is gone for good while, while Kawaki has this karma. You know, thinking back to the first chapter, which I don't like bringing up because I don't particularly care for it. Um, mm. it feels like a step in maybe, in a good deal of like, Character undevelopment. My big problem with that first chapter preview, right, is that it's sort of the way Kawaki is developed. And Kawaki's development has been some of the best stuff, especially in Boruto, but, like, as far as character work goes, you you know, for the entire franchise. Kawaki's character development is sort of a a high watermark. And seeing him, you know, seeing him regress into killing, into sending you where I sent Naruto is not something I'm even vaguely looking forward to. And this feels like a step towards that future, and I'm not exactly excited for that. Um, but I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm sort of suspicious that maybe some fragment of Ishiki's soul just remains inside the karma automatically. 
It's also still a little confusing how he implanted that karma. Amado said he had some kind of way to do it, but I, was, I don't think we ever quite found out what exactly Amado said was the way to do it. And I'm just, I'm just suspicious of this whole operation, I think. There's something, something bad going on here, I'm willing to say. Um, but I'm not sure exactly what the bad thing is. I don't think this is going to end well, is my, my suspicion. But anyway, there's still a whole other chapter here going on. Uh, plenty of other things happening with Momoshiki's return. And this time, it's not really tied to, you know, uh, Boruto notes, not because I used up all my strength or chakra. It's not like the last time, the last two times Momoshiki came out during the Boro fight and the post Ishiki fight, where like he's drained and Momoshiki comes out as like a defense mechanism. This is Momoshiki actively taking over. And maybe. I don't want to say Boruto letting him. That, that, that doesn't seem right. But it's less Boruto being forced than it has been in the past, maybe. I don't know. Um, it's still unclear. It's still pretty unclear what's going on with all that. But again, the Momoshiki stuff is still really interesting. And I'm curious to see what exactly is the, like, you know, again, Boruto is not drained. He's not unconscious. Momoshiki apparently at this point just has the ability to take over at will, maybe? You know, I mean, the drugs, Momo says the drugs are kind of helping. It's not a permanent thing, but it is helping. Um, so I don't know why it would be getting even worse, unless it's just like making the extraction slower. But then Momo uses the word halt when he refers to the karmic extraction on page five. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's a weird thing going on there. Anyway, then Momo comes out and uh, <laughs> just starts spamming massive Rasen guns. Uh, which he can just do, because he's on Tsutsuki, I guess. Um, before I get too deep into that, I want to talk about that Amado line. We've got him this far, don't you muck it up now. My initial assumption was that Amado had some plan for Kawaki, and Kawaki wasn't necessarily in on it. That Amado wanted a certain thing to happen, and that we've got him this far is kind of... Metaphorical isn't the right word, but like... We, meaning Amado intentionally and Kawaki unintentionally, have gotten this far. Don't you muck it up now. Uh, but maybe since Kawaki has, you know, intentionally implanted that karma, maybe it is intentional. I don't know. Maybe he's a part of whatever Amado is planning. I don't know what that is. And I don't think Kawaki would do anything that is a, that would, like, hurt Naruto. Given that Kawaki's entire like defining character trait right now is must protect Naruto at all costs, um, but there's something going on with Amino. He's a part of all this, clearly. Um, anyway, we have this, this some, the fun bit with with the Rasen Don as you know Momo just completely upends uh, Code's gambit back to the fight. I mean, um, and then Naruto shows up. And we have we get to sort of see Kawaki be upfront about why he did all this with with Naruto. Not quite in like plain words, but there's no way Naruto doesn't know what Kawaki's motivation was after this line. I don't think I am okay at all. Why the heck did you come? Um, like that's clearly why are you here? You weren't supposed to be here. I was supposed to sacrifice myself for you, which is again just not what Naruto wants at all. On the Chikamaru was caught. And now there's this, there's this whole gambit going on as, Mo, as Momo uses that trying to kill Naruto. And then we get uh, Karma Code. Which, yeah. Again, we'll see how all this plays out next month. Uh, it's one of those things where it's going to be a very long month to the next chapter, I think. Because uh, there's just a whole lot here. And honestly, I can't wait to see how it all plays out. I'm, again, nervous as always with, with Ka where, where Kishimoto is taking Kawaki. But I'm just going to be along for the ride right now, I think. So yeah, I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe. Or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye!